Well, I suppose it was uh, way back when the old man was in the South Pacific and I was 18 months old and uh, when he got home and um, he stayed in, he was a CB and uh, so we went around a lot of different places. Um, I really sort of became interested about the eighth grade, I guess, and all these guys like, I mean, he had a French paratrooper coming over one night and a German submarine skipper, but when the British Spitfire pilot came by, I thought, you know, that guy's on the track. So I started thinking aviation and uh, at a high school enlisted, uh, took some tests, got to the Naval Academy Preparatory School, entered the Naval Academy in 1963, retired, or not retired, but uh, graduated in 67, uh, went on to flight school. And out of flight school, I went to a Navy helicopter gunship squadron in Macon Delta, uh, the Sea Wolves. Uh, when we got to the squadron, there were six of us. And, um, that alphabetical order, I got sent to Detachment 1. Detachment 1 was there to cover the swift boats. And it had not been very long since the swift boats had left their traditional market time, which was offshore interdiction, and started running the rivers down the uh, very lower part of the Mekong Delta. Uh, the rivers that would intersect and go from the South China Sea over to the Gulf of Siam. And it was kind of neat because we were like a little air force of, of two. We had uh, eight pilots and eight gunners, and you went 24 on, 24 off, uh, always on call. And so as the Swifties would uh, go on an op, sometimes we were briefed, sometimes we were just reactionary. And uh, that's, that's pretty much the, the way it worked. Uh, when I got there, it was still the dry season. Kind of an odyssey in a way, because uh, the Freedom Bird put us into Saigon, we got a little uh, orientation and down to Vung Tau on a C-7, I guess it was, and three more days of orientation. And I remember that um, in the briefing, uh, the guy said, well, you're going to go to different detachments out here, and they're all a little bit different. Uh, the guys down in Dent One are having probably the most fun. They seem to shoot a lot more than the rest of them. And uh, I thought, wow, that'd be neat if I could go there. But he said, also look around, because in uh, the next year, 50% of you will have a catastrophic emergency. So off we went and uh, rode in the back of an old stripped down gunship across the Delta and uh, took a C-123 out to uh, Fuquak Island where we thought that the LST was going to meet us. But uh, it stayed south and <clears throat> anyway, I'm over there and this, this island had 14,000 prisoners on it. And the boats were kind of on the southern end of it. And uh, anyway, one night here comes this guy that lived uh, just down the hall from me in the Naval Academy. And I said, where are you? Uh, Going and he said, Oh, I'm going down the T. And I said, Hey, can I ride me there? So, in the middle of the night, I got on a swift boat and off we went down there. And I remember the LST, which was the Washington County at the time, was anchored out. And here are these two gunships on the sun's just coming up. And uh, swift boats are nested out. And um, I thought, Man, here I am. It's been seven years to get to this point, not knowing what the point was until, you know, maybe uh, six to nine months before that. that that, that had that possibility to it. Uh, because once you get in the conduit, you move along. And anyway, um, it was, it was kind of neat uh, uh, just uh, coming aboard. For the pilots, um, nobody had any combat experience. But the gunners, many of them had uh, shipped over for another tour. It was to me uh, like, geez, where do I start here? Because we got one lieutenant junior grade about ready to leave. He had 11 months in country. His total time in country exceeded all the other pilots. We're all brand new. And um, different levels of experience, but most right out of flight school. But the gunners, they uh, they figured it out. So they, they were the guys that would provide the best um, support for the river boats because they were just precise shooters. So it became apparent to me that what you needed to do was to fly that airplane as well as you could to get them on target to uh, be able to put in um, the uh, suppressing fire uh, when the swift boat got into trouble. Uh, yes, we fired rockets, but uh, we weren't that accurate with them. Um, helicopter just doesn't, isn't that accurate unless you really get down there dog on air point blank. Uh, you don't have a steep enough dive angle to uh, to really do that like a fixed wing aircraft. So the gunners were the name of the game, and um, it was uh, it, it was pretty special. Of the uh, eight that we had over the course of time, uh, 
one, one had his arm blown off, another one um, had a uh, round go through a hand, another one uh, uh, took out a spleen on a direct hit. Uh, it was, you know, similar to the boats. I mean, you were, you were in some pretty close action, and it was just, uh, just kind of a matter of time before something would happen. But we uh, camped out on this LST and got pretty close to the Swifties, and it was a, a whole different kind of thing uh, than when you have uh, carrier operations. So you're, you're quite separated from uh, everyone else. This, this was uh, up close and personal, and just a bun bunch of great guys. The Swifties were in, um, well, we, we, I say all of us on did, really did, and, uh, you know, just ha had a fondness, and it was a, a very, very close. The other detachments on the rivers had more boats scattered around, but uh, this was the integral at Mothership. Uh, and so we ate together and we briefed together, and um, it, it, was, it, was, it was really, uh, really pretty neat. Um, I remember one incident one night, we got scrambled. When I look back in my logbook, the um, sort of your bragging rights are certain flight purpose codes. And if you had a flight purpose code that was like a uh, 3x7, it meant night combat scramble. <clears throat> the more of those you had, the more you were in direct action. So it was kind of like neat having those. Uh, but anyway, on this particular incident, um, this, um, this was one of these SEAL insertion boats. And why these guys did this on, on this particular night, I don't know, but they uh, really kind of uh, didn't follow the cardinal rule, which was to uh, never cross the same point twice. They crossed it the third time, they got ambushed. And their boat was shot up and they were dead in the water and we got scrambled into this thing. And I remember coming up and watching this exchange of fire up around. And <clears throat> anyway, the radios were, you know, again, kind of goofy. But you could tell uh, the, the direction the boat was shooting. So I remember telling my gunners that I'm gonna put this thing in about a about a 10, 10 degree change right here. Just as we hit this point, I want you to put everything you got right down on the opposite bank. And boy, he let loose probably with 500 round uh, burst and uh, it all stopped. 